That means the productivity is low mainly because of certain production constraints. I shall come to the question. I shall come to the question later. Let me tell you about what is this French bean all about. You all might be knowing that it is originated from South America. There are two types of uh, fragilis group. One is uh, uh, small seeded type, another one is big seeded type. That is, one is Central America or Mesoamerican origin, another one is Peruvian Andes, Peruvian origin. There are two groups. One is Mesoamerican. Mesoamerican is nothing but Central. originating from the Central America and the Peruvian Andes of South America. Mesoamerican genotypes are small leaf size types. <coughs> See, the leaf size is very, very small. And the Andean genotypes are <coughs> large seeds, large leaf size and large size seeds. Wild progenitor is aboriginous. What is this? This is uh, Fangelus aboriginous. I just want to tell you that you see, it is originated from this area. During 17th century, it was moved to what is called as uh, European uh, countries. Then from there, along with British people, they brought it to India. Okay. Now these uh, edible potted beans have been originated. Basically, when if you take aboriginals, they have got high fiber content. Then in the little, uh, what is called as clear and covetous tissue on the part wall is very very high. But when we started selecting the genotype for snap potted types, stringless types, that's how the domestication has started. Preference for the parts which remain edible later into maturity would have selected the genes causing the reduced fiber content. The genes which code for fleshy and succulent parts have been selected. Okay. Native Americans might have derived dual purpose cultivars. Some cultivars, for example, if you take Akka Pomal, it is a dual purpose cultivar. It can be used whole part, as whole part and also only the seeds, that is Rajma type. Much of the explosion in snapping diversity appears to have happened in Europe or in the Colombian exchange. From Europe, it might have come to India. You can see the variability with respect to French beef. What is the variability? It is purple types are there, rich in anthocyanins. Whereas green types which you have seen, you can see the red types. I don't think any of you have seen the red type French beans. It is rich in lycopenes. You can see here, we have these collections. Okay, we have yellow types also completely rich in anthocyanins, uh, sorry, xanthopenes, whereas these are rich in anthocyanins. Then green types with purple tinge, purple shade, four types. Then there are two important things, is one is bush type, another one is pole type. In all these things, lot of variability with respect to odd color is also. Coming to the major biotic stresses, what are the major biotic stresses here? The most important biotic stress is rust, that is Neuromyces appendiculatus or Neuromyces fasciola. Angular is called, that is Isariopsis diasiola. Anthracnosis, Colletotricum, Vigamuthiana. Root rot is a complex, complex of Rhizotonium, Pythium, Sclerotium, and Phytophthora. Then among viruses, we have Mopinellomozoic virus, Astravelomozoic virus, and being common mosaic virus. Among bacterial blight, we have two types of blights. One is common blight, another one is halo blight. Halo blight is not common in India, but uh, what is called as bacterial blight or the common blight is Xanthomonas spatiola, which is common in Indian traditions. They are fragmentation. See, resistance, we have to go for, for all these pathogens. Genetic resistance to these pathogens is being evaluated in both the groups, that is Mesoamerican and as well as Andean gene pools we have evaluated and we have identified the source of resistance. One more important thing is, for example, if I take rust, rust is highly evolved pathogen. When it is highly evolved pathogen, there will be several physiological races of the pathogen. When several, physi several physiological races of the pathogen is 
then, then you have to go for periodizing of the genes for all those races of the bacteria. For example, in rust, more than 150 physiological races of the pathogen have been identified. More than 150. For all those races, we have to identify the genes. You are one, you are two, you are three, you are ten, you are nine. Like that, restricted genes have been identified. To facilitate the disease resistance breeding, marker restricted selection is becoming a handy, and we can use that for developing the restricted genes. In case of French bean, genomic map for disease and also resistant genes have been already identified. And in fact, there are several reports on this. Even QTLs have been identified. For example, you see these are shaded areas. You are seeing shaded areas here in this, in this case, is it? These shaded areas represent what is called as the genes which import the resistance to quality treatment, that is anthrax. Those genes will impart the resistance to uromyces, that is the rust. They are monogenic inheritance, that is one or two genes control. Then some of the genes are where I have underlined these things. Here I have underlined these things. These are related to the genes which, which have got the defense mechanism. Like they, they produce the defense chemicals. For example, defense chemicals in case of French beans, what are the pathologies which are uh, produced in French beans? Casualties. These are the ones which have been this. Then some of the uh, genes have been identified which are QTLs. For example, bacterial right don't. On almost all the chromosomes, the bacterial right resistant genes are present. For your information, what is the 2N is equal to in case of French bean? How much? 22. Huh? 22. Correct. 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 See, I am showing you 11 chromosomes. It is haploid. It is 22, isn't it? On all these things, the chromosomes have been, or rather, genes have been banned. We can use these things for incorporating the resistant and susceptible types. Coming to the first important disease, which I told, Euromyces casuali or Euromyces appendicularis. The yield loss reported is up to 90%. Serious during the week. See, when the infection takes place, the urodospores are the causing or infecting stage, uromyces fasciolite, it has got, it is a macrocyclic formula. It has got both asexual life cycle and life cycle. In the asexual life cycle, the infecting stage is the urodospore. This urodospore, what happens, it takes only seven days for completing its life cycle. In the asexual life cycle, when it takes 7 days, in the host tissue, host tissue is around 70 days. That means 10 life cycles the pathogen can come in. When it's 9 to 10 life cycles, the disease yield loss will be maximum. Again, this Euromyces is an obligate parasite we have to maintain for screening particular pathogen results in rapid breakdown of the major genes. When we incorporate the vertical resistant genes, there might be evolution of the new race of the pathogen. By, mainly because of the mutations, transformations, or transformations, the new race of the pathogen will evolve. Then the, the resistant variety which we have developed or which we have released, which will suddenly become the susceptible one. You might have heard about boom and burst cycle, isn't it? Have you heard of boom and burst cycle? Can anybody tell what is boom and burst cycle? Boom and burst cycle. You are not PG students, you should be aware of it. When a variety which is resistant to a particular disease is released, the farmers will take up the cultivation of that variety. The pathogen will be under stress because it is not getting the host. When it doesn't get the host, it also tries to evolve the new race. Once it evolves the new race, suddenly the resistant variety which has spread several acreage will become susceptible. When it becomes susceptible, there will be burst. The boom is the increase in area. When the new race is evolved and if the variety becomes susceptible, there will be burst. That is boom and burst cycle and happens. This, therefore, always we have to go for pyramiding of the genes. 
pyramiding of the different resistant genes is required for durable resistance. You are aware of what is durable resistance, isn't it? What is durable resistance? Somebody should tell the PG students. What is horizontal resistance? What is vertical resistance? You are aware of it? You, you, you no. Know, the students I am asking. Vertical resistance means for different level of phases. It is, it is a race specific. The vertical resistance is race specific, controlled by one or two genes. Whereas horizontal resistance, it is non-race specific, and it is controlled by polygenes, many genes. Okay, we have to go for developing a variety through by pyramiding various resistant genes. That's what I want to tell. Pyramiding of the different resistant genes will be very important. Some of the components like long latent period, when you inoculate the uh, spore suspension, that iridospores is the causal organism, you spray it, when you inoculate it, some genotypes will take 30 days for the appearance of the symptoms. Some genotypes will take 3 days for appearance of the symptoms. Those, those genotypes which take longer time, that, is, that means long latent period, they will show the Resistance. They will show the comp uh, what is called as zero uh, 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 resistance, and there should be small pustule size. Pustule size should be very very small. Then high fibrescence. What is high fibrescence? The trichome density should be high on the genotypes. When the trichome density is high, when the spore sits on the leaf, even if uh, rather uh, uh, produces the infecting tube, it will not touch the epidermal layer. That way it imparts the resistance. High fibrescence, low infection efficiency, these all impart the partial resistance. Then we have identified certain source of resistance as IC5 to 3 c 5 to 3 4 IHR220, KPV1, all these things we have registered with NBPGR, which have got resistance to these uh, particular diseases. Some of the genes have been already identified which are imparting the resistance. I told them you are 3, you are 4, you are 5, you are 6. Nine major genes have been identified. Okay? These genes we have to pyramid. And some of the genes which have not yet been identified, they are not named, they are also reported. BSC6 and the Aura Negro. Aura Negro. These are not yet been named, but they have they are importing the resistance. Two genes in Dorada have been characterized, tagged and mapped. Breeding strategy is to pyramid all these resistant genes. See, for example, in case of uh, uh, contender, have you heard of contender variety? It is an introduced variety of contender. Its yield potential is about 15 to 20 tons per hectare if no disease of if the disease appears on the right side, you can see when the disease has appeared, it is completely devastating. No yield at all. That is mainly because of the rust which can cause. Similarly, Aptopomal is the one variety which is a more stable variety, more adapted to almost all the French bean growing areas in the country. Around 40 to 50 percent of the French bean growing area is by Aptopomal variety. It was released during 1984. 1987 it was notified. But when the disease appears, you can see here uh, so much uh, rather uh, reddish brown pustules. That's just like a coffee leaf must it is uh, it is appearing and the disease will be uh, yield loss will be 100 percent uh, Morning the, the same thing I was asking uh, the student, what is the disease scoring scale? You see we used the 0 to 9 scale. You can see here uh, 0 to 9 scale is the one which we have used for recording the disease. How we record the disease? There are different methodologies to record the disease. Uh, can, have we any, anybody address, uh, rather know about the pathometry? Pathometry? Phytopathometry? What is geometry? Geometry, you might have heard of geometry, isn't it? Metry is measurement. Geo is land. Measurement of the land is geo. Pathometry is measurement of the disease. Phytopathometry is 
measurement of the plant disease. See, for, for measuring the plant disease, for example, 100 plants are there, 10 plants are affected, or presume that five, 50 plants are affected. What do you tell? Oh, 50% disease incidence is there. 50% disease incidence. But the CVRT might be very less. CVRT might be very less. In each plant, the one, one leaf might have been affected or half of the leaf might, have, might be showing the symptoms. But there will be photosynthetic efficiency in other leaves which will give the yield. Therefore, the disease CVRT is very, very important. For that, we have to calculate the percent disease index. In measurement of the disease, one more component is not only disease incidence, we have to calculate the disease index. Not only the disease index, at every 7 days interval or 10 days interval we have to record the disease. How the disease is progressing? What is the rate of infection? What is the rate of infection? Once you see the rate of infection, you will see what is the area covered under disease. What is the area covered under the disease? Area under disease progress curve. All these things when you calculate, you can tell that this is the particular genotype which has got resistance. This particular genotype is susceptible. What I just want to tell you is, measurement of the disease is very, very important when you go for disease resistance building. Okay, this is the disease scoring scale which we have to use on 0 to 9 scale. 0 means no symptoms at all, no more this one. 1 is less than 1% of the leaf area is covered. 3 is 1 to 10% of the leaf area is covered. 5 is 10 to 25 percent of the leaf area is covered. 7 is 5, 25 to 50 percent of the leaf area is covered. When it is 9, more than 90 percent of the leaf area is covered by the disease symptoms. Such a disease scoring scale we have to take and you have to tag the plants. For example, you have got 100 plants. You tag around 10 plants for more precise information or tag around 5 plants. And on those 5 plants, plant 1, plant 2, plant 3, plant 4, plant 5, like that you have to record it. Leaf 1, leaf 2, leaf 3, leaf 5, it might be having around 50 leaves. For all the leaves you have to give the disease scoring scale. First leaf might be having disease scoring scale of 9, second leaf might be having 5, 3, like that. Okay. Like that when you, disease scoring scale when you record for each of the leaves, there is a formula for calculating the percent disease index. Summation of all the disease scoring scales into 100 divided by maximum scale. What is the maximum scale here? 9. Then you will get percent disease index. When the percent disease index, based on the percent disease index, if it is less than 5%, you can group it under resistant genotype. If it is around 10, moderately resistant. 10 to 25, it is moderately susceptible, more than 25 is susceptible. It varies. Okay, this is the disease scoring scale we adopted in restoration speed. We identified one line, IHR 220, is an Hungarian line. You can see here the parts are extra broad in size, width is very high. But it has got resistance to two diseases. One is bacterial blight, another one is rust. And Akkakoma is the most adapted variety. We made the crossing. And we develop by following the pedigree method of breeding. You know what is pedigree method of breeding. Can anybody tell what is pedigree method of selection? Hybridization followed by pedigree method. What you do in pedigree method? What is the difference between pedigree method and uh, bulk selection or uh, uh, what is called as mass selection? Subsequent generation of In subsequent generation, what you do? Like, you go for individual plant selections. You maintain the pedigree of that. For example, during 2007, you have made a cross between A into B. A into B, 2007 you write. Then in F3 onwards, you will go for individual plant selections. Which plant you have selected? You have selected 7 plant. A into B bracket 2007 or 07 dash 3. The third plant you are collected the seeds and you have grown in the progeny room. Then again you are going to do what is called as artificial inoculation. Then 
you will select some individuals which is showing the resistance. Along with the part quality. Such of those, if you follow that pedigree, then pedigree selection in F6 or F7 generation, what happens? Uh, you will select a genotype which has got resistance with good part quality. You see, you can see here, you, you see susceptible row, you can see here, it is 30 days after sowing, the susceptible, non susceptible check. You see, one of your members was asking, what is the methodology for screening of the thing? Non susceptible check should be there. You see here, I have put the non susceptible check, resistant line, resistant line. Resistant line means check, uh, that is the line which we are checking. See, on either side, you can see there the resistant line which you have put in the middle, the susceptible check we have put, and it is showing high level of resistance. Here, this line is a susceptible line. You can see completely brownish in nature. Whereas this one, we doesn't take the disease. This uridospores, you know, that just like a coffee powder spores, which will be transmitted by touch, or it is by through air, or it is by spore suspension. If it were not to be resistant, if it were not to be resistant, certainly the disease should have occurred. Well, what is the reason for its resistance? When the disease is here, the disease is not appearing. The disease is here, but the disease is not appearing. Even if you take the disease leaves and tap it like this, the disease will not appear. What is the reason for that? Can anybody tell? Resistant gene. Yes, it has got resistance. Why it has got resistance? Gene responsible. Okay, it has got, it is, it is possessing a gene which is responsible for resistance. What is that it is doing? What is that gene it is doing? No, it is, it is showing the tolerance. Why? What is that it is producing? Yes, you see, Euromyces is the fungi which produces the toxin to cause the symptoms is uric acid. These resistant lines will produce the enzymes which will knock down the effect of uric acid. What are those enzymes? It produces the uricase enzyme. It produces the allantoinase enzyme. It produces the peroxidase enzyme. It produces the catalase enzymes. These enzymes will knock down the effect of the toxin produced by the pathogen. How fast the, the resistant line produces this is important. How fast the rate at which the defense chemicals are produced is important. It is not that this susceptible line doesn't produce those enzymes. The resistant lines, the susceptible lines also produce those enzymes. But they take more time to produce those enzymes. By that time, the pathogen toxins has already overtaken the host tissue. You got the point? The, the mechanism of resistance is mainly because the defense chemicals, phytoalexins or enzymes which are synthesized at, at a very faster rate. What we did was, we took the resistant genotype, also susceptible genotype, and we inoculated. There are two methods of inoculation in case of rust. One is post suspension method, another one is tapping method. One more thing is, this pathogen, you know, it takes the entry through stomata. In case of French bean, stomata are there in the lower surface of the leaf. Therefore, what we did was, this is the lower surface, we take the susceptible leaf and we tap it. Okay? We tapped it. it. It has taken the entry. When we took the resistant genotype and susceptible genotype, in the susceptible genotypes we analyzed for enzyme activity. Within three hours of inoculation, there was no enzyme activity. In the resistant genotype, enzyme activity has started. This is what we analyzed. The rate at which the enzyme activity starts is very, very important. Then after 72 hours of inoculation, even if the susceptible line enzyme activity was there, but the symptoms had already appeared. You got the point, you know. This is how we developed the line and uh, we identified the, uh, the what is called as resistant genes also and we released this variety as Artha Anu. This is the first variety having resistance to blight, bacterial blight and also rust which carries the genes, two dominant genes, UR6 and UR4.
sorry, U are six and U are four. Okay. What is the DS? This is reaction. I already mentioned that percentage is this index we calculated. In alka alum it is 1.91, whereas alka pomal contained the it was highly susceptible. And the uh, IHR 220 is one of the parents which we have used. It was also showing resistance in all the years 2003, 2004, 2005. Okay. Another important disease is agalogy is caused due to PO, uh, PO is area of cystisola. How many of you are vegetable side uh, uh, PG students here? Most of them might be fruit crops. Vegetables are also there. Okay. Uh, I shall not bore you much. Okay. Uh, this is another disease is uh, Isariasis graciola, Angularly spot. What happens in Angularly spot is that on the leaf axil the disease appears. It will not cross the leaf axil that the brain will be there, you know. It will not cross. It forms an angle. Therefore, it's called as angular leaf spot. The most important thing is it is also monogenic prominent resistance. And the fragulous coccineus and fragulous polyanthus, these are the two uh, white species which impart the resistance to this. And uh, there is one institute called as CR. Have you heard of CR? Central Institute for Agriculture and Tropica in Colombia. They exclusively work on uh, your crop, sweet potato, and uh, common wheat. And these people have identified several sorts of resistance. And uh, diversity studies with this pathogen uh, revealed that poor evolution of angular waste part pathogen with the gene pools of this snapping host. And uh, we can use these genotypes for incorporating the resistance. These are some of the markers identified for uh, Fusariopsis and the five QTLs are identified and these QTLs can be used in uh, rest, uh, developing the resting genes and the pathogen is very very variable, highly variable. Physiological risk in this case is also for many, we have to go for pyramiding of the genes for incorporating the resistance. Now another most important disease is uh, Colletotricum. Colletotricum, it is a seed core pathogen. See, uh, when a person goes for seed production in case of French wheat, it is highly self-pollinated crop and uh, the way taking care of, uh, when uh, going for seed production, one should take care for uh, avoiding the, what is called as pollinated tree. See, the, even in the leaf, it appears at the leaf axil and the uh, main axil, the leaf, uh, what is this, symptoms, sunken cancer will occur at the pots also and it gets transmitted to seeds also. Okay. There are 10 major genes have been identified. You know about what are major genes and minor genes, isn't it? If you are not uh, this one, you please take one course in uh, genetics and plant breeding. Then certainly you will understand what it is. And there is one course offered by pathology division of the university, post plant resistance. That's a very good course you can take it. I do not know who is taking now. Earlier, the Kutani sir was taking that. The Kutani was taking it. It was an excellent course. All the PG students are taking And uh, you see, 10 major genes, 9 major independent genes have been identified CO1 to C10. And uh, CO3 and uh, CO9 are uh, allele. CO8 is a recessive gene. All of the 9 are dominant genes and multiple alleles exist. Uh, at the CO1, CO3 and CO4 low cell, okay? See, these uh, nine resistant genes are from Middle American gene pool. I told you Middle American gene pool is small seed size and smaller leaves. Whereas CO1 is the only locus for the Andean gene pool. Andean gene pool is bigger seed size and bigger leaves. Introgressing these genes, using marker resistant selection, Deploying different gene combination is the best strategy in developing anthracnose genes. In fact, uh, there is one institute which works mainly on uh, uh, pulses, that is Indian Institute of Pulse Research Kanpur. They have released a variety called as Kailash. This Kailash has got resistance to this uh, anthracnose disease. Now, another important uh, production constraint is uh, the root rot complex. Root rot complex, as I already mentioned, it is the complex of rhizotonium, ethium, sclerotium, 
and the fusarium axisport. In rhizotonia, what happens is there will be shredding of the bark. Whereas the rhizotonia occurs, there will be shredding of the bark. <coughs> pithium affinity dermatum, the in, inside the pithium tissue, uh, pink tissue will be completely eaten by the pathogen and it will become hollow, soda straw like. The, the leaf is uh, what is called as seedlings will become completely hollow and it starts bleeding. Whereas in case of sclerotium, there will be fruiting bodies, just like the millet, small millets, fruiting bodies will be seen and it's not melting or rotting. Whereas in Fusarium oxyporum, when it affects, the reddish brown discoloration will take place. In the vascular tissue, the reddish brown discoloration will take place and the plants will start melting. See, this is the different uh, picture showing these things. Then we have to go for selecting the genotypes here which have got high sclerin tomatoes tissue or high lignin content and also we have to select the genotypes which have the potential to produce more of adventitious roots. When the disease appears, if it produces the adventitious roots, it is something like avoiding the disease. We have to go for pyramiding the non hilic resident genes from different parents. The rationale is to accumulate and fix the resident quantity to try to side from different sources of resistance into a single genetic platform. Such lines could be used directly as an improved cultivar or it can be used as a source of resistance. These are all the important uh, fungal diseases. Now coming to the viruses. Moon mosaic virus is also called as Hasgram mosaic virus on bean common mosaic virus are the two major viruses which are prevalent in, in, in India. This moon mineral mosaic virus is a bigoma virus. It is a white plate transmitted bigoma virus. Whereas bean common mosaic virus is a epic transmitted party virus. Okay. You can see here, I, I told you that it is a white plate transmitted virus. Initially what happens is yellow specks will appear. Yellow specks will appear. These yellow specks will boil this. And, uh, Trifoliate leaf, which is emerging, you know, that also will show the golden yellow patches. These yellow patches will turn into, entire plant will turn into golden yellow. Presently, there are no varieties. Of course, now we have released one variety called as Arca Arjun, which has got resistance. I initially I told that there are bush types and as well as cold types. For both the types, this disease is very severe. You can see here, this is one plant, it is in farmer's field. I went there and I tried to search one plant which is resistant or which is free from the disease. It is one acre plant. I went to each and every plant and I tried to locate one plant which is, which is free so that suddenly it will have resistance. But I could not find even a single plant which is showing resistance. Okay. We screened more than 250 lines. Initially, we narrowed it to 127 lines. And we identified one line which is IC525260, which is a local collection, and it was showing which was free from that disease. Okay. Once it showed the free, 19 lines were free. Those 19 lines, we again went for confirmation of the resistance. How we, how to do the confirmation of resistance in viruses? You should have a susceptible plant, you have to grow them. The symptoms will be there. On such of those plants, you have to release the white plants. White plants, you have to culture it on castor or on brinja. If you culture it, there will be a lot of white plants will be there. Such white plants, you have to release it on the susceptible plant and you have to cover it with a mesh or band. Overnight, you have to do it. Like that, when you overnight, you do it those white flies will feed on that susceptible plants and those virulent white flies or fed white flies have to be taken and it has to be put on the check varieties. We checked it like that, that is artificial inoculation we did it for 19 lines. Out of those, one, two lines which showed resistance, one is IC525260, another one is IC525284. This IT5258-4 is a line from IAPR Kanpur, that is IAPR 96-3. Okay, then we by using, uh, again, made the hybridization, incorporated the resistance, 
and worked out the genetics of resistance in F1 all the plants were susceptible. One more thing is not always the disease will appear. The disease will not appear always. Even during summer, sometimes there will not be any disease. For that, we went for artificial screening every time and we identified the line in the F6 population. Brother, I just wanted to tell you that we worked out the genetics also. In the F1, they were all susceptible. In F2, it segregated in the ratio of 1 is to 15. One resistant and 15 susceptible. That is, when it is segregated in 1 is to 15 ratio, we are concluded that it is a two recessive genes with epistatic effects. Two recessive genes with epistatic effect is nothing but duplicated gene interaction. We concluded that it is a duplicated gene interaction and that we advanced the lines and in F6 and F7 generation we identified a line which is showing resistance to Hosgram allomozyte virus and Moomin allomozyte virus. During 2012, we evaluated along with infect row and every alternate row we have put the infect row. Infect row is taking the disease. You see how devastating the disease is. When I showed this line which has got high level of resistance, then the breeder suggested that at this stage you go for raising the seeds of, seeds, seeds of this and put it in the high disease area. This is actually the uh, what is called as seedlings which are raised in the protest. Even then that did not take the disease. During 2012 we did that. 2015, uh, sorry 13, at every six rows we have put the susceptible check. You see it is a susceptible check two rows and one, two, three, four, five, six rows. Again we have put the susceptible check. Wherever the testing line was there, testing line did not take the disease whereas the non susceptible check took the disease. Again if you see here after six rows, again there will be susceptible check which has taken the disease. This is how we incorporated the resident genes into known line. We calculated the disease index. Disease index was much, much less. It was around 1.43 and whereas in the susceptible line it was 69 PDI was there. It was highly susceptible. Okay, now what is the reason that a particular plant did not take the disease? You see, adjacent plant, adjacent row, complete disease is there. Now we have to work out the mechanism of resistance. What is the biochemical basis of resistance? What is the biochemical basis of virus resistance? You, you might have already studied it. What is the biochemical basis of virus resistance? We, with bio, biochemists, we analyze these lines. What is the quantity of jasmonic acid and as well as salicylic acid production in these lines. The production of jasmonic acid and salicylic acid are more in the resistant genotype than in the susceptible genotypes. That indicated that they are responsible for resistance. Okay. The other important disease is the epitransmitted virus that is being common mosaic virus. In being common mosaic virus what happens is there will not be any yellowing there will not be any puck, puck green. But the wood line, the leaves will become dark green in color. The leaves will become dark green in color and there will be, it, it appears just like a wood of a snake. You have seen, you know, wood, wood of a snake. It looks like that only, you see here, it looks like that. And the leaf, you see, we have identified the source of resistance, 5 to 5 to 8, 4, and this is a susceptible one. It is one, one more important thing is this being common mosaic virus is a seed transmitted virus. When I collect the seeds from this, when I go for next season, again the disease will appear. That way it was very easy for me to screen the job plasma. Resistance is controlled by one dominant gene and three most effective recessive genes. One <coughs> dominant gene I and the recessive genes BC1, BC2 and BC3. The action of the dominant gene I is masked by the recessive gene BC3. Therefore, when pyramiding these genes, a marker which is tightly linked to dominant gene should be maintained. And we have to continue to use that dominant gene. Then only it will impart the resistance. 
Then another important disease is bacterial blight. Sarcomonas axonophodes, pancreatic axonophodes, is a seed borne disease that limits in the production. Yield loss is 30 to 35 percent. It is polygenic rather than <coughs> Breeding for resistance is complex because of 20 to 50 years are distributed across all the larval chromosomes. Casuals acute polyase has got resistance. It processes high level of resistance. Casuals acute polyase, casuals coccineus, casuals polyanthus, casuals aboriginus. Whereas coccineus and also acute polyase carry the high level of resistance to this. See, initially the watch soap lesions will appear and these watch soap lesions will coalesce and the cells will, uh, tissue will become inactivated. Expression of these QTLs is influenced by environment, disease pressure, plant activity and plant order, seed, leaf and pot. The scar markers are identified, they, they can be used. The breeding strategy is to combine the marker selection with intermittent phenotypic selection in developing the lines with improved characters is very much important. Most important thing is we get confused when the seedling starts breeding. We think that it is a root rot complex. It is not root rot complex, it is an insect pest. This is stem fly at the two leaf stage. At two leaf stage what happens? This ophiomia pageola, it is a return fly. It lays the eggs on the leaf, cartilage on the leaf. And uh, it, when it goes it, these eggs will hatch within 3-4 days. And the maggots will come and start sucking the sap and it makes the petiolar mining. It, when it lays the eggs on the Leaf. When it hatches, it has to reach the root and the stem to suck the sand. Then it starts mining. Petiolar mining will be observed. Then the stem mining will be there. And by the time it reaches the what is called as uh, root and the stem, it will be completely grown up matter. It starts sucking the sand. When it starts sucking the sand, the plants will show like this. Complete mating will show. If you just peel here, if you just peel here, you will get more than 40 to 50 maggots per plant. Per plant you can get 40 to 50 plants. Normally what the people will think that is that, oh, some wind has come, let me go for uh, uh, trench with uh, systemic uh, fungicide. No, systemic fungicide will not work. At two leaf stage, it is a critical stage. At that stage we have to go for spraying with systemic insecticide. Then it will control. You can see here the maggots. It is all uh, there. When you peel it, you will uh, get it. Here also we have to select the genotypes with high lignin content and also those genotypes which have got capacity to produce the advantageous fruits. Breeding strategy is to select high lignin, more advantageous fruit, and the thick stem. And the recurrent back cross was followed by crossing Latta Amuk with resting parents we are doing. Of course, we are not yet come out with a line which is showing high level uh, resistance. Then one more point is in case of trench beam when the temperature goes above 33 degrees Celsius, then the deformed pots will be there. You can see the pots, the pot filling is very, very uh, ununiform, pot form pots will be there. Uh, therefore, we have to screen up the lines and uh, we have developed some of the lines uh, which have got uh, high temperature tolerance also. One line which we introduced from uh, Okinawa University that is called as uh, uh, Haibushi that has got high temperature tolerance. You see this is the Haibushi line which has got high temperature tolerance and uh, also we got some lines from uh, Varanasi which was showing high level of uh, tolerance. We uh, deposited with the MDPJ of IC 5224. Why I am telling IC you might be knowing that whenever you collect a germplasm we have to generate the passport data. Once you get the passport data, immediately you have to deposit the NBPGR. NBPGR will give the identity number, that is indigenous collection number, IC number. Once you deposit that, once you get that IC number, it will be nomenclated or it will be named with that number only. And we have deposited that IC 525224 and we have made the process with Arka Abu and we have developed some of the segregating lines which have got proper pod filling. You can see here the proper pod filling is there. Whereas when the temperature has gone above 36, the pods were not uniform. Okay, 
The breeding strategy should be conventional breeding methods using marker stress selection and also we have to go for pyramidal genes and rapidly deploying the resistant genes via marker stress processing is very important. We have to enable the simpler detection and selection of resistant genes in the absence of the pathogen. If the disease doesn't appear, for example, rubiole or rust doesn't appear, how to do it? Do that. We have to identify the molecular <coughs> markers. Some of the markers have been identified. Contributing to the uh, to simplified breeding of complex traits by detection and indirect selection of quantitative trait process details for major effects can be this one. There is need to develop faster and reliable screening procedures for phenotypic and uh, marker selection of testing traits. We have to translate the molecular and genomics information obtained into tools used for marker edit breeding and integrate marker edit breeding to document the classical breeding in a case by case basis. Thank you so much for your attention. I took almost one hour. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Students, can students, students can ask questions. Students can ask questions. Students may please ask questions. Sir, you showed some of the pigmented variety. The pigment will be available from three also. Uh, pigmented variety, like a pigment, red like a pigment, and then uh, have to sign in that is purple pigment. Then they are there. So we are for our also on seeds are there. No, uh, on seed there will be varied different types of seeds should be there. Purple colored seeds should be there, black colored seed, black seed, black colored seed will be there. But when I showed purple podded variety, the seed will not be purple podded only. But the petiole, then the leaves, that will be purple color only. Okay. Uh, the plant will be, of course, I will show you. To, to get anthracin, we have to eat whole pods. Uh, here, if this is a purple potted variety, you know. Uh, just one, let me show you. This is a purple potted variety. It has got, the flowers are deep purple in color. Flowers are deep purple in color. Whereas in the red potted variety, this is uh, lycopene rich, the flower color is, uh, uh, it varies from purple to white like that, light purple color. Yeah. Whereas in, you see here, Akkakuma if you take, it is a green uh, potted variety. The flower color is purple. Whereas Akkashara, it is green potted variety, the flower color is completely white. And it is not directly linked to that. But as far as uh, anthocyanin is concerned, that is, purple uh, part of the have some link uh, or other correlation with the uh, uh, color and also branch color. Branch color we have to see. Not related to see. No, no, not related to see. Some seeds will be, mottled seeds will be there. Completely white with black color will be there, mottling will be there. But they give you green colored pots. A, a seed color is not having any correlation with the pot color. It was a bit of a seed color. Even with the dish, we chop and eat. It's a vegetable type, not. Uh, no, one more thing I just want to tell you this purple potted types, you know, when you harvest, there are very good purple potted types, there are string lens. Then it doesn't easily snappable. Snappable means easily breakable without any stream. But when you just steam it, that color will disappear. That color will disappear. But actually, these pots, you know, they the northeast people they prefer. It. Kerala people they prefer it. because they're rich in antioxidants. These I've analyzed these for antioxidant activity also. Antioxidant activity is more in color types than in the green. Okay, any other things? We are all working on vegetable research here in this room. You are working on what aspect you are working on? On what aspect you are working Any of the legume crops you want to take? Tomato. On what aspect you are working on tomato? Combining ability double cross Combining ability. Okay, double cross ability. How about you? No, so one more person is already done. Micronutrient? 
With what? In one word, you have to Hybrid vigor. This is the vigor. Cis is what? Cis. You told heterosis. Cis is what? Cis is the condition. Hetero means different. Heterosis is altogether different condition in F1 from either of the two parents. See, very simple in that word only it is there. Cis is condition, hetero is different. It is altogether a different condition in F1 when compared to either of the two parents. What are the two parents? Two diverse parents. Two diverse parents. Thank you. Can anybody working on